So, welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. What have we got this week, Mark? Rory, I'm going to show you Decompose Parameter. Okay. It's a very useful refactoring. It's useful when the object that you're passing as a parameter is more sophisticated than what you really need. Okay. And, I'll, and, and that's kind of a generalization. It, it can actually be the opposite, where you can pass in kind of a simple object, and you want maybe something more sophisticated to come out that you pass in instead. But it allows you to change the type of the parameter being passed in based on the usage. Now, okay. to show you this, I want to first show you an application I built to demonstrate this. We want to kind of sure. deliver some foundational context uh, so that you understand the scenarios when this refactoring is useful. Okay. So I've created a rectangle painter program that allows me to click and drag and then release the mouse button and it draws rectangles for me. The colors are random and the alpha channel is always at 50% transparency. So we can just kind of stack these up on top of each other like this yeah. and eventually blot out the background. I can mm -hmm. clear, uh, I can draw new ones. This make five button doesn't work yet. But when I click it, I want it to create five random colored, randomly positioned rectangles sure. in the available space. That's what I want it to do. In fact, right behind he us here is this make five click event handler, which um, gets some random positions for X and Y and a random color, but it's got a to do here. Hey, create the rectangle, add it to the internal mm -hmm. list. Now, if we look at our button up event handler, our mouse button up, our mouse up event sure. handler, this is the code that we essentially need to call from down here to make five. We, we're doing this five times right here, right? This loop of five. So we need to, to this is the code we need to, we need to create. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's extract this method, extract this into its own method. And uh, we'll call it create rectangle like that. And uh, now, now you can see what I'm passing in a mouse start and a mouse sure. end to it is what I'm, I'm passing in. In fact, we can come in here and we can inline these temps here yeah. like this if we wanted to do it like that. Uh, and so here's our create rectangle call. So we're basically passing in two mouse event args, which is not bad because we, we had those in the process in, mm -hmm. in the process of doing this. When the mouse went down, well, that's what we've got. We yes, yeah, the mouse so event good. args for the initial position, which had that X and Y. And when the mouse w button was released, we passed in again those mouse event args right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not bad. The problem is, is down here, I don't have any mouse event args. I just have my X, Y coordinates. Yeah. If I wanted to get those, I'd have to, I could create them like this code shows right here, but that's a lot of code. Yeah, it's a bit messy. And instead, instead, what I'd like to do is I just want to pass in my ints. So here's an example where I have a method, create rectangle, that takes a sophisticated class or type as a parameter and what I want to do is I want to simplify it. So I can do that by coming in here, hitting the code rush key and choosing decompose parameter. And that's going to look through all the uses of that parameter. Ooh. And in this case, it found two. It found that we were using that parameter to get the X property and to get the Y property. So it gave us two variables named with the same names as those properties. I'm going to call these X1 and Y1. Yep. And I'm going to come over here for the second mouse event args, and I'll just tab through it so you can easily see everywhere it's referenced in here. It's used here for the X, there for the Y. Again, just like before. Yep. Hit the code rush key, choose decompose parameters, and now choose X2 and Y2, like that. I'll name them those to give them those two names. If we look at our original create rectangle call, it's up here. Mm -hmm. It's been changed. And we are now passing in the X and the Y parameters for each of those two pieces. Okay. Sure. And so yeah. now for our create rectangle call down um, here, all we do is say create rectangle, x1, comma y1, comma x2, comma y2, like that. That's great. I mean, effectively, what you've done is you've taken this method and you've stopped it depending on this complex type and indeed all the extra complexity that may have gone into creating it. And now it just depends on the bare minimum necessary to do its job. Exactly. And now we have code that's much easier to read and it's more usable. In this case, it's certainly more usable, right? Mm -hmm. So decompose parameter is useful when you have a very specific type and you want to change it to a more general type, which is the type of one of the properties of that specific type that you're passing in. Yeah. Let me show you again how useful it is. Here I've got, I'm, I'm drawing crosshairs right here in this using statement. Mm 
Uh -huh. And so I'm just gonna hit the code rush key, choose extract method. We'll call it draw crosshairs. Notice we're passing in E and the, uh, uh, the mouse event args in here. I can just come in here and I can say, well, let's decompose parameter here. Yep. And it's gonna turn it into graphics like that, which cleans up that code. What's going on with local mouse data? Yep. Okay, it's using, it's, it's here for the X and the Y position is what it's doing. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead uh -huh. and decompose that parameter as well. And we're just passing in the X and the Y. So now we have this killer draw crosshairs method now that I can use from all over the place. All I need is a graphics object and a center position for the crosshairs. Sure. And it's gonna take care of the rest. Makes that way more useful. I can do the same thing over here with draw stretch, this bit of code that draws the stretch box. Hit the code rush key, choose extract method, call it draw stretch box, and then come down in here and let's decompose that parameter. We'll go ahead and change that to graphics and we'll change uh, this to um, the X and the Y positions as well. And so now we can do that. And it's just getting our code, it's making our code cleaner uh, and easier to read. And then, you actually get some performance benefits from this as well occasionally, Mark. You, um, imagine that your, uh, what was it, the paint event args wasn't paint event args, but it was some more complex class that contained, mm -hmm. in this case, the graphics object. Um, by detecting the fact that you're only using the graphics property of that object and deciding only to pass that in, you now don't need to construct the larger type around it. So you actually save yourself the resource and the allocation of all those extra pieces. Uh, so it, it, you know it's far more efficient to pass in the smaller dependency, the smaller object that is necessary only for this particular circumstance. Right. Yeah, I find this refactoring is often useful when I'm, when I'm in the process of architecting an application. So I might start and I have a, a sense of what the, where the design is going. But as I move through it, I realize, okay, this is too, too specific. This, the burden on the calling code is too great. We can simplify. And so it's a really nice, fast way to simplify, especially after an extract method, yeah. right? Where the extract method may say, well, okay, I'm going to give you what I think is, is the right answer, but really you want, a more, you want a more general answer rather than such a specific answer. Sure. The, la the last thing I just want to show here, Rory, is uh, the contrived demo. <laughs> so the, la the, the demo you just saw was the realistic demo. Sure. The contrived one just to kind of, again, just reiterate, you know, what you can do with this. I've got a person. He's got three, uh, three properties, first name, last name, and birthday. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a static class called calc. It's a helper class, and it's got a method called get age. It takes a person. Right here, and so here's the code right here. I'm calling get age, and uh, I just want to come in here and I want to use decompose parameter on it. So instead of passing in a per person, we're going to pass in a birthday. But 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 we could change this. Notice that the parameter name is highlighted and linked up with the other one. Yeah. So far, you really haven't seen me modify these much, right? I took my x's and turned them to x1. Sure. But birthday is a very specific property name for a person. Whereas get age and get age is also a very specific method, but we could kind of we could make this more general, turn it into get years since, and change this into start date, something along those lines. So we might change this to start date like that, uh -huh. and then um, come in here and rename get age to uh, get years since. Okay. Along those lines, right? Like that. And now what we have is we've done two things. One is we used decompose parameter to, uh, to get the right, to eliminate the requirement of having to pass in a person. Yep. And, and secondarily, we renamed the variables so that it would be easier to use. We, rena yeah. re we renamed the, the, the parameter and the method name. It's much clearer. And exactly. And now we see when we're down here, oh, before we had a call to get age and we passed in a person. Now we have a call to, to get your sense and we're passing in a birthday. If you are reading this code for the first time, you are going to realize that this is reusable code, seeing it named like this, right? Whereas before, when we just saw get age and we were passing in a person, that didn't look like code I could call from another location. Yeah. Right. So it's not only is it making the code easier to consume and reuse, it's making it from the standpoint of a person reading the code. Uh, it's giving them the discoverability that it is, in fact, reusable. That's fantastic. Whereas before we didn't we didn't have that. That's great, Mark. Well, thank you very much.
For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.